Clarity on Fire, a podcast for people who know what they don't want out of their life and career, but aren't sure what they'd rather be doing. In a world where it's easy to exist, but hard to feel alive, we, Kristen and Rachel, two certified life and career coaches, are here to help you cut through the information overload, get unstuck, and focus not just on how you can have a career you're passionate about, but how to create a whole life that feels fulfilling. So join us here, where we serve up inspiration and down-to-earth wisdom in a way that only two best friends can. We want you to experience the relief of knowing that, yes, you're allowed to want more out of your life and career. And no, you don't have to wander through the dark anymore. Our job is to light the fire that shows you the way. Let's go. For all of you listeners of The Good Place, you're going to love, or listeners, <laughs> watchers, <laughs> uh, lovers of The Good Place. This is our Jeremy Barami episode. <laughs> yes. And if you don't like The if you haven't watched The Good Place, please, Netflix, it up. Oh you will God, love it. I don't understand favorite. anyone who hasn't liked The Good Place. What a great quarantine show. And also, this episode is not about The Good Place, and nor do we even talk about the, this concept in this episode. <laughs> but in hindsight, it's the Jeremy Barami episode, which is a... a little mind-bendy. <laughs> this is a, a... The Good Place theory is that time bends in a Jeremy Barami, which is just a really, really weird cursive. Unpredictable. Who knows really what that even means. It, yeah. And so uh, that's kind of what this episode is. And I wanted to bring it back because I don't know. I just, first of all, I just love it. It's one of, it's one of the more, uh, to me, it's one of the more interesting ones we've ever done. It's one of the more philosophical ones. Absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the ones that requires a lot of letting go of your brain and letting it kind of sink in on a deeper intuitive level, which can be a struggle. Because mm-hmm. there's some, you know, contradictions, but also they make sense. Paradoxes. And- Wasn't it Carl Jung who said that paradox is the best way to try to understand? If you're going to try yes. to understand hu- human humanity at all, like paradox is probably the e- like the best thing that gets close to understanding the human experience. Yes. And as someone who is a lover of psychology and philosophy and have we had my brother listen to this episode before? Because if not, that would he is one of the more philosophical moments. He also I've has an ever. obsession with time, the way I have an yeah, obs- he obsession does. with time. He does. So I'll have to that'll be a, a little side discussion for us. This is an episode about desire and wanting what you want and how sometimes no, every time if you want something, it's for a good reason. And that reason is wanting something can actually be evidence that it's possible and that it's going to happen. Is evidence, I would say. Is evidence, yes, that it's possible. So on that note, we're just going to drop you in to this episode. It's at the beginning of the episode. So enjoy this from October 2018. Hi. Hey. I have... (laughs) I have something to talk about that I think is going to trigger the most logical and literal people who listen to this <laughs> podcast, which probably is not the majority of say, you. I'm not sure we have a ton of those. But well, I do know there are some. That's true. But I used to be a lot more of that kind of person. Yeah, but it wasn't natural. It was sort of forced. And I think that might be true for some, a lot of us. A lot some, of us. Some. I think that there are people who I've coached who just... You know, on the Myers Briggs, they're more of an S or they're more of a T or both. Yeah, right. And right. so they just they think in more concrete and they think in more logic. And so this is going to be a very deep, non logical, philosophical conversation that doesn't actually have an a right or a wrong answer. And I think we're not that, trying to get to a right or wrong answer. Oh my gosh. Either. I think that That's people, not where this is going. I think that people really st- struggle sometimes when there is no right or wrong answer and there's no way to prove one way or the other whether something is true. It just, mm, it really eats at that logical <laughs> mind. Whereas I love a good philosophical conversation. Yeah, I don't You care. and I could talk philosophy all day. We will text with my 17-year-old brother about philosophy. He is. On, a the, on a frequent basis. Born philosopher. Trying to get him on the podcast. We're going to try to. One day. It'll you happen. You guys would love him. He's great. (laughs) He'll never hear this because he doesn't bother to listen, of course. (laughs) Of course not. He's 17, obviously. (laughs) So, okay. This is something that I have, I returned to over and over again. And it's something I first learned about in Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Eat, Pray, Love. Can you tell that we love Elizabeth Gilbert? (laughs) Freaking love (laughs) Liz Gilbert. But for a good reason. 
I don't know. Does that make me a very like basic white girl that I love Liz <laughs> Gilbert so much? I think that Liz is so wise and she's had such a... If you read Eat, Pray, Love, what's interesting is when I first sat down to read this book, I thought I was going to be reading a very sort of frothy book about a woman's, you know, post-divorce discovering myself. <laughs> and it's not like that at all. No. It's so much deeper and more enlightening. And it's very deeply spiritual. It's as well. very spiritual. I didn't expect that. And it's just once you read it, you understand why it's a mega, mega all time bestseller. I mean, tens of millions of copies sold. And I'm sure it still hangs out on the bestseller list from time to time. Made into a movie. I and mean, this book has reached so many people. So this is something that she writes in the very last chapter of this book. And it's not necessarily giving anything away for me to read it, but I want to share it and I want to have a conversation about this because it's something that I've shared with clients from time to time. And it always blows their mind and it blew my mind. And I think you need to hear it too. So you ready? I'm going to read it to you. Let's do it. Okay. My thoughts turned to something I read once, something the Zen Buddhists believe. They say that an oak tree is brought into creation by two forces at the same time. Obviously, there's the acorn from which it all begins, the seed which holds all the promise and potential which grows into the tree. Everybody can see that. But only a few can recognize that there is another force operating here as well, the future tree itself, which so badly wants to exist that it pulls the acorn into being, drawing the seedling forth with longing out of the void, guiding the evolution from nothingness to maturity. In this respect, say the Zens, it is the oak tree that creates the very acorn from which it was born. Man, I wish we could have my brother on for this conversation. I love that. <laughs> <sighs> I just feel well, like I need to sit in. I, I need know. to like Bask I swim in that around for a second. in that for a second. So can I actually, can I read the next part that comes after this? Because yeah, I think it's so relevant. The beginning of this book, it starts with her basically on the bathroom floor, if you'll remember. And she's having a breakdown in the middle of the night because she is, what did she say? 31, which when I first read this, I was 24. And now that I'm 30, I'm like, oh my God, she was so young. Yeah, She's having this breakdown in the middle of the night in the bathroom because she knows that she needs to get divorced and she can't imagine how she's going to do it. And she's just full on having a breakdown. And she hears this voice very clear. She said, it wasn't my voice, but it wasn't not my voice. I just recognized it as a voice very different than the chaos of my own thoughts in that moment. And she said, it didn't say anything grand or monumental. It just said, go back to bed, Liz. <laughs> and I did. It was like, all of a sudden, I was infused with this sense of calm and peace. And I just, I went back to bed. And so I'm going to leave you with that. But then I'm going to read this because it's relevant to what she says next. I think about the woman I've become lately, about the life that I'm now living and about how much I always wanted to be this person and live this life, liberated from the farce of pretending to be anyone other than myself. I think of everything I endured before getting here and wonder if it was me. I mean, this happy and balanced me, who is now dozing on the deck of this small Indonesian fishing boat, who pulled the other, younger, more confused, and more struggling me forward during all those hard years. The younger me was the acorn full of potential, but it was the older me, the already existent oak, who was saying the whole time, yes, grow, change, evolve. Come and meet me here where I already exist in wholeness and maturity. I need you to grow into me. And maybe it was this present and fully actualized me who was hovering four years ago over that young, married, sobbing girl on the bathroom floor. And maybe it was this me who whispered long lovingly into that desperate girl's ear, go back to bed, Liz knowing already that everything would be okay, that everything would eventually bring us together here, right here, right to this moment, where I was always waiting in peace and contentment, always waiting for her to arrive and join me. The reason I love this concept so much is that if even a part of you believes it, you feel a lot less alone in the middle of some of your hardest struggles. Because if it's not just you, alone in that moment, trying to figure out 
what to do or where to go or how to create something out of nothing, but that the thing has already been created or the outcome has already been achieved and the person on the other side or the situation on the other side is calling you to it, you just have to follow the path. You just got to follow. And you, just gotta, you just got to pick up the call. Exactly. Instead of having answer. to create it all out no. of nothing. Right. So the reason I find opportunities to share this with people is because I think that it gets to this very deep philosophical question of what is the point of desire? Why do we want things? Why are we attracted to things? And I, I think that this is such an interesting thing that desire isn't random. Like there are plenty of things that could be possible that I have no interest in, like whatsoever, was born with literally zero yep. interest in pursuing those things. And there are other things that I very deeply feel that I want and I crave and I visualized them and I imagine them and I can see them almost so clearly in my mind's eye. And the question is why? Why that thing? And why not something else? And I love this idea that it's because desire is almost proof that what, what you feel called to or what you want exists. Because you wouldn't feel it in the first place if the potential for it didn't live inside of you the whole time. Yeah. Damn. It's deep. I it's love deep it. Stuff. You know, as I'm thinking about this in the moment, I'm thinking in some way I almost feel like Clarity on Fire yes. was already an entity uh-huh. that we just, just pulled, needed creators. We just pulled out of the void. Well, the, these versions of us. Right. We're whispering in the ear of the versions of us six years ago saying, it's okay, I know that this sucks, but you can do this. Right. I feel like Clarity on Fire, the business, and then obviously us in it, is this more developed tree that knew there's so much that you can get from this experience and there's so much that you can give and there's so much value here and you've just got to get through these harder times to be able to bring this into fruition. And when you think of it that way, I can look back and almost see the breadcrumbs that were left along the way, the little sparks of inspiration or the little moments of of intense progress. And serendipity and, too. Right. And And all of it makes sense because if this is where it was leading... It had to leave these breadcrumbs for us to follow yeah. to get to it. And it's like Clarity on Fire wanted to exist so badly in the world that it was like, all right, we got we to gotta kind of prod these girls along because oh God I don't know if they're going to get there on their look own. Look at her. She's laying on the floor <laughs> in the hood of despair. This doesn't look good. Uh-huh. They're like, all right, <laughs> you got to step in and <laughs> help this thing out a bit. Um. And when you think about that way, it's just, it's just, it feels like such a relief to me. Um, okay. Does, do any of you guys watch The Good Place? And if you do, <laughs> great. If you don't and you have any intention of watching it, skip over the next 30 seconds because I don't want to ruin the show for you. It is so... I was thinking this, but I wasn't sure if I could say, should say it. Good. It is so good. So, so, and if you don't care, then fine. I will ruin this for you. But at the spoiler end, spoiler coming though. Spoiler coming saying. at the end of season two of The Good Place, these characters who, if you have don't watch the show and you don't care about being spoiled, hmm. are um, they believe that they are in heaven in season one. They find out they're actually in hell, and that uh, they've just the demons who have been pretending that it was heaven in order to sort of psychologically torture them, and it's hilarious the whole hijinks that ensue. And at the end of season two their memories are wiped and they are sent back to earth in order to see if they can earn an actual place in the real good place. But they forget everything that's happened. But they don't remember anything that's happened. And it shows the more omniscient beings watching their progress. (laughs) And there are these like near misses and there's these things where the characters are, and I think this is what season three is going to be about, are um, they're leaving these little breadcrumbs and these little serendipitous things so that the characters will find each other and work together in order to get into the good place. And the very end, oh my God, I love this so much. <laughs> the very end of the season was Michael, who played by Ted Danson. Uh, finally, two of the main characters had found each other and they were about to like 
like have a conversation and it ends with him saying like he's like rubbing his hands together <laughs> and he's like here we go and then it ends and i'm like i really think that there that that's what's happening in our lives that there are i don't care if you believe in god if you believe in a higher power the universe angels omniscient deities i really don't care what you believe <laughs> but i think there is something and you could call it whatever you want but there is an essence that's like that's like literally wanting you to pick up on the clues and the acorns, so to speak, and is rooting for you. And like, literally, there's even future versions of you who are energetically pulling you into this future that you don't even realize is destined for you, but that if you could pull back and kind of see it from the om omniscient lens, you're just so close to having. And you're and that you're going to have no matter what, if you can just kind of follow the signs and and just trust that the impulses aren't there for no reason. That there's a reason you feel attracted to these things. There's a reason you feel called to watch that YouTube video or go meet that person. Yeah, it's almost like if you truly crave and want and desire something, it might be because in some way, shape or form on like a non, when, when we like take time out of the picture, it might've already have happened. Yes. And there's a part of you that is almost anticipating in advance, even yes. though consciously you have no idea and you want it because you know that's where you're going, which feels like the complete opposite of what's what it feels like in the moment. You're, you're thinking, I want this, but I don't know if I'm ever going to get it. No, I think you might only want it because it's possible to have it. Right. Otherwise, there would the be no point. Because the potential is there and because maybe it's almost inevitable. Yeah. And if you act like it's inevitable, that's when people get what they want. Yes. Yeah. So... <laughs> for those of you who are like deeply NF on the Myers-Briggs, you're going to be like rolling all around in this like a pig in mud, <laughs> I suspect. But for those of you who are more literal and more logical, who I, I don't blame, like that's just how we're wired. Some of us are wired in a way that we can just, this stuff we eat up. And there are some of us who are like, this is, I can't, this that's is too, too much. much. <laughs> and I need proof or I need evidence or I need a perspective I want to latch on to the idea that that my desire could actually just be proof positive that what I crave is possible and that it might actually just be proof that there is an inevitable conclusion where I end up with this or a version of this thing that I think I want. But I'm not sure I can actually buy into that. I like to, because I was once a very sort of agnostic person, and I know that's more of a religious word, but I mean it in that I wanted to believe in something anything other than just, hey, we're solely responsible for our own paths and journeys and there's nothing greater going on here. And I just wasn't sure. But there are certain things that I like to think think about and that have helped me expand my mind and just acknowledge that I might not know everything. Because here's the thing, time and space, we understand very, very, very little of what's going on here. Einstein said that time was relative, and I'm not going to argue with that. There's also so much that we as physical human beings can't sense. There are colors and sounds and... Literally, uh, bats <laughs> and dolphins navigate with sonar. I can't do that. Right. I don't doubt that it's possible just because I can't sense that particular... Like, I don't have that particular sense. Right. And so when you can keep in mind that there's so much that we literally can't even experience because, Just on are, Earth. because there are limitations to our human senses, then you can start to think, okay, well, if I can't see the whole spectrum of color and light that's available or hear all or of hear the all frequencies, of the sound, right? then who's to say there's not energetic experiences or presences that I just can't with my eyes or ears or Who's to physical say, senses yeah. experience. And so maybe we are being guided. Who's by, to say time doesn't loop back in on itself, right? Who's right. to say that the reason that we feel imp impel, you know, compelled is because time is a really thin, sheer thing and that the future you is rubbing up against the past you and there's not really much of a difference and you're feeling that residual effect. So to me, that makes perfect sense. Right. So, so <laughs> to think as humans that we know how everything works. No, actually, is wild. <laughs> actually, of all matter in the universe, 
we are only capable of perceiving 1%. Okay, so I want you to think about that. Literally all matter that you are capable of perceiving, the things you're touching, the people that you're looking at, the clouds that you're, the smells, the tastes, all of that is in the 1% of matter that we are capable of measuring and perceiving and discerning, which means 99% of what is going on in the universe, you are incapable of actually perceiving or measuring in any way. So how in the world are you going to think you know everything when 99% of everything that is, is completely, you are completely blind to it? I love the feeling of my mind being just completely blown up. Like, I just don't know anything. Who cares? <laughs> when you think of that, you're like, I oh, don't know anything. What do I know? <laughs> Who knows? Who cares? I'm dumb. <laughs> like, great. That means so many things are probably possible that I can't even fathom. And why am I? Why so am when I... we hold on to our limitations, like it has to be this way because this is what I've experienced or this is what yeah. I've seen. It's just silly when you think of it it's, in that context. It's, to be quite frank, it's ignorant. <laughs> it is ignorance in, to believe mm. that your 1% is somehow 100%. It's not. It's it's a teeny tiny fraction of a huge pie. And it's almost arrogance, I think, to act like just because you can't perceive something, it might not be true. And even among the things I can perceive, it's almost like I can look back and see the whole lineup of how things were being orchestrated. So to me, it feels like there's more proof that there's a grand order to things and that there are signs and signals and synchronicities and and random moments that shift entire trajectories. There seems more proof of that than that this is just all random and we're just bopping around together because too many things line up in two weird coincidental ways that... I mean, like, even just you and I going to different colleges and Ending still up in randomly, the same place. Right? Because it, by 18 different completely random In a crowd incidents. of tens of thousands of people. Right? It's like... We still The met. chances of that were so small. Yeah. Inc- minuscule. And it has then led to this whole... But yet it seemed being, inevitable. Right? It seemed inevitable. So, to me... It seems wild to imagine that this is just all random and there's nothing propelling it forward and there's nothing guiding the experience. I mean, on a side note that I still find very relevant, this is why I'm annoyed when people don't believe in extraterrestrial life. (laughs) This just took a sharp left turn. (laughs) No, it's very related because this is another fact that blows my mind, but there are uh, estimated to be more planets in the universe than there are individual grains of sand on the entire planet Earth. (laughs) Think about that. Think about that. So you're saying that our one grain of sand out of all of the grains of sand on every beach, on every lake, every surface in on the planet Earth, we're the only ones who have sentient life? Get out of frickin' town. (laughs) Like, get out of here. Get out of here. That, or if that we is, can't find planets where we can perceive That life, means they must not exist. Then, right. Even though the universe oh is infinite. Infinite. The, the, it just it just keeps... Oh, hold on. I gotta... Ooh, that no. just, <laughs> I can't go there because then my brain literally, literally does explode. I literally start getting nauseous when I think about <laughs> the universe never ending. I can't do that right now. But I think the other sentient beings who are way more evolved than us are LOLing at the, <laughs> if they do such things in their evolved state, at the idea that we think somehow we're the only ones here. Oh my God. How ridiculous mm. is that? I mean, come on, come on. So we're, we're not that about cool. That, if we're wrong about that, which we got, we've we're got not that be. special. We're just not. Then who knows what else we're wrong about? Right. We've been wrong about a lot of things. I feel like this, this topic humans, turned into how little we know about anything. <laughs> well, I think the point is that to humble you. Yes. We need to be humbled because your ego... And, and to be open to to bigger, to something else beyond what having, we can perceive. To having your ego blown wide open. Yes. And I think that all of us... Listen, it's important that we have an ego. The ego is the thing that keeps us grounded and focused on the here and now. I think that if you had no ego, you would literally be, you wouldn't feed yourself. You wouldn't get up in the morning at the same general time. You wouldn't be able to have a job because- Yeah, because time would be 
lost to you. Right. You need to be able to to sometimes forget these bigger, deeper, crazier, more philosophical, mind-blowing things from time to time because otherwise you would spend all of your time floating around thinking about them. <laughs> In a stupor. <laughs> and you would probably starve to death and never pay your taxes. <laughs> so it's important that we have that sort of structural and linear and logical aspect of our brain because I think it keeps us surviving and we... And I think it, it in a way, protects us. But, but I too think many that, of us spend too much time in that exactly. space. Exactly. We've forgotten that anything else exists beyond that. And when you spend most of your time in that space saying, I've got to feed myself and I've got to pay for my house and I've got to get groceries and I've got to do all these things, then it can start to feel like this burden of figuring out all of the things and navigating life is 100% on your shoulders. And when you zoom way, 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 way out from your little experience to think, maybe there's a lot more going on here. And maybe this is all leading in a particular direction. And maybe the things that I want are not random and not things I should just brush off because maybe they're leading me exactly where I'm supposed to go. Then that pressure to be solely responsible for the all the mechanics of your life is so intensely lessened and it almost feels silly to expect that just of your yourself with all of your limited senses. I just had the funniest thought, which was that I am ignorant and arrogant enough to drive a car every day and have literally no idea how it works. <laughs> no idea. Couldn't fix yep. it if it broke. Totally lost to me, but I use it every day. And I don't I think I understand it, but I actually don't. Or even something more ethereal feeling than that. The internet. I don't understand how the internet if works. If I went back in time <laughs> and I had to explain to someone the internet, I couldn't do it. No. I would I'd be like, um You have it's... this computer box and then you push a button and then you just Google that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do no. it. And yet, yeah, I interact with things on a daily basis that I have so limited understanding We built a of. business. Our entire livelihood is based on the internet and I don't know how anything it about it. <laughs> so if you can do that, if you can drive a car and you can be on the internet, which you must have been in order to download this <laughs> podcast, then, and you use it every day and you interact with it. And yet most of us can possibly explain half of the things we use on a daily basis then what makes you think that's not going on on a much bigger level in your life? That you're interacting with things on a daily basis that you think you understand fully and you know next to nothing about, such as the nature of time and the nature of <laughs> desire and the nature of what it means to want something and what it means to feel called to something. Or, you know, limiting beliefs like I'm never going to get a job. Just because you've had a job doesn't mean you've interacted with every possible, nor you understand every possible outcome or every potential opportunity that might be av available to you. Like, why are you, why do you believe the limitations of your very, you know, small ego-driven mind? It just doesn't make, not only does it not make sense, it's not probable or statistically <laughs> likely. No. Right? No, that no. you understand all of the possible outcomes. No. You don't. It's Humble much, yourself, people. It's much more likely that you have desires and interests and random connections because of all of the different jobs out there, there's something that is like, she would be great for that. Or yeah. we could create something amazing together that is trying to get your attention, like tapping on the shoulder, like, hey, 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 look over here. Hey, look over here. And that might be why you just happen to stumble across it on a website or you happen to meet someone in a coffee shop who gives you a business card because it wants you as much as you want it. So if you want to put this into action, one of the things I think is kind of fun and interesting to do is imagine a time in your life where you really needed support and you were really unsure and you were really un unclear and things maybe did work out and you know how they worked out and they're okay now. And I want you to imagine going back to that place as yourself now and just sitting next to you or putting a hand around or holding the hand of or hugging the former version of yourself and just saying, it's going to be okay. Or as Liz says, go back to bed, Liz. <laughs> I also like the idea of doing that in reverse 
yeah. which is imagining the version of yourself in the future. Comforting you who now. Who has the job or has the relationship or is fully healthy. Looking back at your situation now and what would that version of you say to the current you? I think we should do both. Because yeah. then, then if you do it now, here's what I love about this. If you do that now, if you sit for five minutes and maybe you close your eyes and you imagine yourself visiting with an a, a earlier version of yourself who doesn't even need to know that you're there in this <laughs> imagination. Like you can, this is your vision, do whatever you want with it. But if you imagine sitting with yourself or comforting yourself or giving yourself some advice or wisdom or just silently sitting in support and solidarity with your, your former self, you've just proved this right. You've just proved that you're, it's, you're capable of doing it. You know what I mean? Yep. You've also proven that at any given moment, you can be the one who needs comforting and the comforter. Yes. Because you're always further than where you were and you're always not yet where you want to be. And so you were always both simultaneously. You're always all of yourself. And you yourself. can tap into whichever part of you you need to in that moment. Time is a very thin veil. <laughs> Come on, you've listened. Okay, that's like Harry Potter, right? Right? That veil is oh, really yeah. thin oh, yeah. between here and wherever they were yep. on the other side of that thing. Beyond the veil. That was what that was called, that chapter. RIP series. Um, <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on that. So, okay. Have we worked your mind into enough of a frenzy <laughs> that it might have just decided to blow itself out and let go? <laughs> I hope so. I would love to hear your theories on this. Just your reaction. Your, I don't know. I just, one of my favorite this things to do is make thoughts. people, is to blow people's egos wide open and just force them to acknowledge that bigger and broader things might be possible and that the limitations of our naturally small, all of us have small minds, our small human minds are just not enough to comprehend what might really be going on for you or for any of us. And I just find such joy in it. I take such pleasure, sometimes wicked pleasure in it, <laughs> if I have to be really honest. <laughs> I know. I wish I had taken a philosophy class. I guess psychology was similar, but I could just talk I about never this took stuff a all philosophy day. class either, which Seems is hilarious. Like a missed opportunity. I really would have killed in a philosophy <laughs> class. I'm sure. We have but to make sure your brother takes a philosophy class. Oh my gosh! Yes, and then we'll have him on to uh, share some of his to, what to mansplain philosophy to us at 18. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> he would do. <laughs> he oh, he totally would. Um, okay, so. Uh, yeah, please leave us a comment and let's let's have a yeah, discussion. Give us your reaction to this whole conversation. If you don't like it, that's fine. I'm open to you telling me why you have a hard time grasping this or why you're just dubious or whatever. I, I'm open to having a discussion. Intellectual conversation is fun and sexy, might wanna, I add. We want to just take you out of your normal day-to-day -day routine and look at life from a totally different perspective. Yeah, for it's a fun. It I find fun. this fun. It's perspective giving. This is my version of a party. Oh, are you kidding? Yeah. I just roll around on this. <laughs> yeah. This is way better than partying and drinking until 2 a.m. If you ask me. <laughs> for those of you who have not been listening to every episode recently, or for those of you who have been listening and keep meaning to act on this, but haven't yet, here's your reminder that we are, we're trying to support you during this pandemic time by offering some things that we don't ordinarily do. For example, right now, you can get 50% off of our intro completely do-it-yourself course, the Passion Profile Short Course. Mm -hmm. First of all, go take our quiz or retake our quiz if you haven't yet. That's going to help you. Quiz. You go to our, go to Clarity on Fire. It's literally all over the homepage. Go take the passion profile quiz. It's going to help you understand the best interaction between your passion and your work. And then the course is going to help you set your compass on how should I be approaching my work, maybe differently than I thought. Scarlett's and passion is barking at things outside. She has a lot of passions. That's one of them for sure. Oh, she just, <laughs> I hear her. She just came upstairs to sniff under the door Trying and be like, I am bored. Please, Please let me on the podcast. I want to be on the podcast. <laughs> so you can do the short course. You can either you can do a single session with us. This is, again, this is all going to be going only through June 5th. 
So we don't do single sessions. This is not a normal thing. We, we usually only offer that to former clients. So if you want to do that, you're welcome to do a single session with us about anything. And if you even don't know what to focus on, we're happy to... If you're like, I need coaching, I just don't even know what exactly I'd focus on, we can give you some suggestions. Um, and then you can also bundle the two if you want for even cheaper. You can get even more money off by doing the short course and then upgrading your cart to add a single session. And then we can... The bundle is an extra $50 off. That's what we're saying. Thing. Yeah. So, um, and then you can do the short course and then have a session to talk through what to do next. So there's a lot of options here, but they're only available until Friday, June 5th. Yes. So clarityonfire.com slash pandemic, or you can go to the show notes and there will be links there to all of these things. So I know we've talked about this a lot, but that's because this is temporary, even though it's felt like it's lasted forever. This is temporary. And you got to get it while the getting's good because the getting ain't going to be good for long. We don't want you to say, oh, no, I didn't realize. We want to make sure we've told you as many times as we possibly can. I mean, ad nauseum. <laughs> I'm a little nauseous. <laughs> Uh, you might be a little nauseous after listening to this episode because mm -hmm. sometimes when I think about, you know, time space and, and time, oh, I get a little nauseous. I can't think about it. I literally get like, kind of hot, cold sweat the situation. The brain is not equipped to handle some of those it can't big, think that big, 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 big concepts. It, I, I literally think that is what mind blown means is that your mind can't comprehend it and then your body starts to shut down because <laughs> it, it's just, woo, Cannot compute. <laughs> can't compute that. So you might feel a little bit nauseous. That's okay. Walk it off. Go listen to like, you know, Something really light the and good stupid. Place. <laughs> or watch the No, the good place might do that to you too. That's true. But, but it, it does it in a fun still way. Fun. Uh, All right. So we will be back on Friday with a new, finally, a new book club episode yeah. on Glennon Doyle's latest book, Untamed. Oh. It's a good one, you guys. Please read this book. You don't have to read it before Friday, but just read the book. Read and this come, book. We're going to share some of our favorite parts with you. Okay. See you then. <laughs>